Human touch is is pretty wonderful stuff. I think most people out there are aware of the fact that it's nice to be touched consensually by somebody you trust, by yeah. somebody you love, by somebody who who you've given permission to touch you. Yeah, that's great. It's way more than just a nice thing, though. It's really good for us, for all of us. But it's not just touch from humans. We are going to hear about that topic today from Helena Hartman from the German city of food. Uh, that is to say, Essen. Science Unscripted. Hi, I'm Helena Hartman, and I work as a psychologist, neuroscientist, and science communicator at the University Hospital in Essen. And together with some colleagues, I just published a really cool study about how amazing touch is. How amazing touch is. What was, what was the conclusion about human touch that you reached based on your study? So we pooled together a really, yeah, a large number of studies with almost 10,000 individuals all together. And we wanted to find out what exactly helps when we get touched by other people in a consensual way. Um, for example, what we found, and this is, I think, the major finding, is that there is a widespread beneficial effect of touch, both on our mental health and on our physical health, and both for adults and newborns, and both for people who are healthy or sick. And what exactly did they find? How, what, what was this beneficial effect that happens when you get touched? So we investigated a wide range of so-called outcome measures, so um, things that people investigate in studies that are interesting to them. So this could be, for example, your pain levels or your anxiety, your feelings of depression, but also things like uh, stress hormones like cortisol. Many studies measure different things, and we try to um, find out what happens in all of them. <laughs> so it is safe to say, though, that if I'm feeling physical pain and somebody consensually touches me, my pain will go down. And if I'm anxious or possibly depressed or suffering other mental health issues, if somebody consensually touches me more often, those will improve. I think overall, yes. Of course, there's always, as scientists, we have a more specific answer to this, but I'm going to try and keep it short. So in general, uh, physical and mental health outcomes like pain, anxiety, stress reduced. And this is usually measured by asking people before and after a touch intervention. So after they were before and after they were being touched. Um, and here we do see that significantly the pain, the anxiety, the, the feelings of depression are reduced after the touch. And how exactly did you measure that? Was it a survey? Yeah, so it's important to mention that we did a meta-analysis, which is basically a study about many studies. Um, so we collected uh, all the studies and we, we tried to um, summarize what people did and what they measured. And they measured a bunch of things. For example, so-called subjective measures. That means that people were just asked how they think or feel about a situation. Do they feel depressed? Do they feel anxious? But... Some studies also used, in addition to that, so-called more objective measures. Um, so they measured stress hormones using saliva samples or analyzed cortisol concentrations, but also something like heart rate or blood pressure. So it's, it's really a combination of all of those. How significant was the, the reduction in pain or the improvement in mental health? Are we talking like a 10% improvement, which, which would be great? Or is it more than that? Yeah, that's actually a very good question that I cannot answer. What I know is that statistically speaking, the change was significant and usually statistics take into account a so-called effect size. And what we do in a meta-analysis, we look at all the effect sizes that have been found in different studies and we see if those overall go in a positive, so beneficial direction or the opposite. And what we see that it, it goes clearly in the positive direction. So people really benefit strongly from touch. And we're talking here about touch events, or at least that's how it was described in your study. What exactly is a touch event? Yeah, that's, that's, I don't actually know why we wrote that. It, it's a very complicated word and quite difficult to understand, I think. Um, so a touch event could be something like a hug or um, a touch on the shoulder, but also something like a longer massage. So the idea is basically uh, at one point in time, something happens that has touch in it. And that can be long or short uh, or in different varieties. And it just means that in one event, touch is being applied. An in individual instance of this, let's say right now that I, I touch Connor or he touches me, 
what exi- what happens inside of me that leads to such a benefit or an effect on my well-being or 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 or, or my perception of pain what what's what's going on in the brain I think uh, to some extent we as scientists also still don't know the full answer to that um, that is that is the truth and that's good because otherwise we'd be out of jobs I think um, What happens is that uh, the touch is perceived by the skin and basically is transferred to the brain where it is processed. And what we know is that the touch that we get leads to the um, release of certain neurotransmitters in the brain, for example, oxytocin, and these regulate how we feel and they have a strong uh, influence on our emotions. Um, And what has been shown multiple times in the past is that Um, when you touch people, they have a positive reaction in their body, in their brain, and thus also in their in their yeah, psychological feeling and how they actually feel about it. I'm kind of extrapolating from your meta study and also invoking cliches, but would this mean a country like Germany, where people people like their personal space and where I per, this is my personal opinion, I don't think people touch each other as often as in my home country, the U.S. Um, w- would your research imply that? There are some countries that are in more pain. The people in them are in more pain and they're suffering more mentally because they're not touching each other much versus, I don't know, uh, let's take a, a Spanish-speaking country with the, with the besos on the cheeks and lots of social interaction and physical interaction. They might be happier. Is that something that could possibly be true? That's a good question. And as a German, I have to refute that a little bit because I'm a strong hugger, actually. And uh, in, I come I come in some communities and then I, there's no hugging and I'm really, um, yeah, oh, I, I don't like that. So I think that Germany is back and forth a little bit, but I agree with you in principle. But basically, um, we didn't find that many direct relationships um, of the benefits of, of touch with the study location. So where the study was done, we found a few and this kind of goes in line with what you just said. So people in South America had higher benefits from the touch than people in North America or Europe. Um, While it was a little bit the opposite for, so this was in adults, for newborns, it was a little bit different. Here, um, newborns in North America benefited less than, for example, newborns in Asia or Europe. Europe. Um, We cannot take really detailed conclusions about each separate country. So I think this will have to be a little bit the focus of future work. There are people out there, some of our listeners right now, who, who would love to be touched more. Hmm. I, I, would be, I would love to be touched more than I yeah. am. I, I think mo- and if, this, if it applies universally to all people, then, uh, then we need some tips for those people, right? Yeah, and I guess what, what can they do if, for example, they don't have someone they can ask to consensually touch them more often. I mean, that's kind of a big ask. Do they, does, this, does touch work with a pet? Can your pet be a substitute? I saw somewhere in your study weighted blankets, I think, were mentioned. What can our listeners do to improve their outcomes based on your work? Yeah, so I think a main takeaway that I mentioned already before is that you don't need to have a lengthy massage each week. You can you can hug your colleague or your friend, um, but maybe ask before, uh, and that already may have a positive impact on your health. And one finding that I found really surprising is that actually for adults, it doesn't really matter who provides the touch. So it can be a partner, it can be a, a healthcare professional, but it can also be an object such as a weighted blanket or a social robot or even one of these weird head massage metal things that make you really give you kind of shivers when you use it, at least me. This is just kind of a random thought, and I'm not sure you can answer it, but why why do we need that? I can imagine a different kind of homo sapien or a different kind of animal, a mammal, not needing to be touched at all. It doesn't really do that much besides, what, push, push some muscles around, move some blood. Uh, why, why, why is that so important? Yeah, so actually, I am an empathy researcher, which means I have a lot to do in my daily life with researching interactions between people. And a a big part of these interactions are touching each other, reading the other's emotions, trying to understand and share affective states of other people. And I think touch plays a fundamental role in that. So through touch, we can begin to understand how other people feel. We can console, console them. We can show um, in a way that we are there for them and we support them. And I think this is a really strong indicator that touch is necessary in our lives. And that was Helena Hartman, 
of the University Hospital Essen here in Germany talking to us mm. about touch. Really interesting point that she made there at the end, uh, or that we doubled down on, that it doesn't have to be human touch, right? Because I'm thinking about the people who don't like to be touched mm -hmm. or don't, don't like touching other people. They're, they're, I think there's a phobia. Hepa, hepa, if I'm getting that right, hepaphobia, people who are put in a, in a state of distress yeah. at even the idea of being touched by other people. So even for those people, there's a, a way to benefit from this research that you can use an inanimate object, like you said, a weighted blanket or one of these massage devices and, and, and get the, the, the beneficial effects of it that way. Yeah, yeah. And as someone who owns a weighted blanket and a... a You're sold on that, right? It's nice. I like it. Yeah, and I've and I've got. A, I hug my pillow. Uh, that's kind of like touch or a foot massage device. For me, it's funny because I've I've had those and I kind of use them, but it was it's it was a guilty pleasure sort of, hmm. and now it's not. Now I, I can I, I there's science to back up me doing this. <laughs> it's good for me. It's improving my physical health. It's improving my mental health as yeah. well. But just to reiterate, uh, get as much touch as you as you can. Make it a regular part of your day. Hug your partner if you've got one. Ritualize it. Yeah. When I go out the door, let or you go out the hug door. Hug me. Let's hug. Or when I come back from work <laughs> or wherever, let's hug. Let's keep hugging. In. Should we start hugging? That? <laughs> let's finish this up and give each other a hug, Gabe. That's it from us. SU at DW.com. Science unscripted. Are we actually going to do this? Ah. Ah!